Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video on this second generation Cadillac SRX. And today we're going to kind of go back to the basics and do more of a maintenance type video. Um, today's video we're going to actually show you how to change the oil on this vehicle. Uh, so the complete process from beginning all the way to resetting the oil life indicator at the end. And so uh, if you're new here, uh, we've got a lot of videos on this SRX as well as a second generation CTS. Um, so I'd encourage you to subscribe and check out the rest of the videos. So let's get started. All right, let's start with what we need for the job. Uh, this car takes six quarts of full synthetic oil, uh, the 5W30. Um, so whatever your choice is on that, I'm using the Mobile One High Mileage. Um, you're also going to need an oil filter. Um, I've been using these AC Delco filters. I'll put um, links in the description to various ones I've used over the years, but today we'll be using the PF48E. Um, and this is all stuff that's re readily available at Walmart. Um, and also, uh, this uh, AC Delco fuel system treatment is something that GM now recommends putting in your gas tank at every uh, oil change. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And the only other thing you'll need is a 15 millimeter socket. And usually I like to have something to use as a, a breaker bar on that socket um, because it, that uh, oil bolt has usually uh, gotten quite tight inside there. All right, so right now we're standing underneath the car facing uh, the front of the car, and there is the oil plug. It sticks out of the back of the oil pan, the back edge, so I'm gonna zoom out so you can see kind of where it is in relation to everything else. Um, but it is right there on the back edge of the oil pan, uh, right next to part of the exhaust. Um, so if you've recently run the car, uh, you'll want to watch your knuckles on that exhaust pipe. Um, don't ask me how I know that. All right, so the one thing about this is depending on how um, hot the engine is, the oil will shoot out of this quite a bit. Uh, so when you position your pan or whatever you're going to catch it in, um, you really want to position it towards the back of the car, not so much directly under the, under the plug. I mean, I usually try to catch under the plug right at the edge, but it's going to want to go right over the pan depending on how hot that engine is. Um, and again, you'll want to watch this. Now, I've let the car cool off, so it may not be too bad today, and I can actually touch this. Um, so, got a 15 millimeter socket here. All right, now normally I am not able to break this loose with my bare hands. We'll give it a try. Nope. So that's why I like to have this breaker bar handy. And there it goes. Once you get it turned a few times, usually you can get up there and get it with your hand. And I usually just hold in on the bolt, press in while I'm turning it until I can feel that it's not threaded or that it's unthreaded the whole way. And you can see it's starting to drip. And we're going to try not to get it all over our arms. I'm kind of doing this backwards. So once you feel like it's, it just clicked, so I know it's, it's unthreaded the whole way, so we're going to want to pull this off here as quick as we can. And you can see how much that's shooting out of there. Got a little bit on our fingers here, but not much. you want to make sure that you watch your pan because now that it's settled down it's about to come out of the pan so we'll recenter it now 
And so this is what the uh, oil plug looks like on the SRX. And so pretty boring little plug, but of course make sure that um, it still has this nice little rubber gasket intact on it. And that's a 15 millimeter. All right, I usually wait until um, it's kind of just dripping pretty slowly like this and it's not a steady stream anymore. Um, I realize that's probably way more time than a quick oil change lets it drain, but hey, at least I know most of it's out of there. So we're going to go ahead and put the uh, oil plug back in and snug it up and wipe this down. And, um, you know, I, the oil filter I find is much easier to access from the top of the vehicle. So what we'll do is we'll put a small pan down uh, underneath the vehicle to catch any uh, residual from the oil filter and we'll tackle that from the top of the vehicle here in a minute. And when I'm tightening it, I usually just tighten it as snug as I can get it with my hands. And it will tighten back up like it was before on its own. No need to go crazy with the breaker bar. Now I have seen it on occasion shoot so far that it hits the muffler here, um, or, or the exhaust pipe that is. Um, so, you know, you want to look there and if, if, it, if it got any on there, wipe it down so you don't have that uh, burning off later. And quick programming note here. I do listen to the comments and one criticism I, I've gotten more than once is the audio or lack thereof in the video. Hard to hear me sometimes with everything else that's going on. And so on top of my camera here, I have my latest little upgrade, uh, wireless microphone. So uh, hopefully this video uh, sounds a lot better than the past ones. All right, so we've got the hood popped. A um, Couple points of reference. Of course, the oil fill cap is here and we'll get to that uh, <clears throat> after we do the uh, oil filter, uh, but the oil filter is just a straight shot through this cavity here. All right, so if you look over the edge here, uh, you can see the oil filter is that big blue thing right there. And so we're just gonna unscrew that. And if you look real close, and man, this, I don't know if you guys can hear in the background, but it is storming outside. So this is gonna be a good test for these microphones and how well you can hear me over everything else. Uh, anyway, if you look past the oil filter, you can sort of see uh, the edge of the oil pan that I laid down there to catch uh, any oil that might still be in the filter. And there will be some. So put some gloves on because it'll get a little messy. All right, so typically if the last guy didn't tighten this down too, well, too bad, which last guy was me, so hopefully not, uh, you can do this by hand. And there it goes. They do make a tool for this, but shouldn't need it. And so you can see how there's getting some oil on the side of it. And we just keep unscrewing. And then I like to tilt it up so that we don't make a big mess. And you can see it does get down there on that uh, cross member right there. And I mean, it doesn't really hurt anything, but I usually wipe it up because I do. All right, so we've got our brand new filter here. 
just like the one that come out of it. And you should have a rubber gasket around the edge here. And so what you're going to want to do is take some of your uh, fresh oil and an old rag and coat that gasket so that it uh, seals uh, back up against the car well. And there we go. And we'll get the new one in there. All right, now the fun and easy part. Time to fill her back up. So I mentioned earlier, one thing GM is now recommending um, at every oil change is adding a bottle of this uh, fuel system treatment uh, to your to your tank. Um, I'm not normally one for adding, um, you know, magical bottles of random stuff to the gas tank. Um, I've always kind of thought that was a little bit silly, um, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and go with the advice. Um, one, it actually comes directly from GM. There's a TSB, a technical service bulletin about it. And basically this is to help with keeping deposits and other junk off of uh, your fuel injectors and intake and other parts of the engine uh, that are prone to build up. And I actually experienced an issue with this uh, last summer that ended up resulting in uh, some pretty expensive repairs, so um, no more than this costs. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Now, as is the case with uh, many things like this, I do not recommend purchasing this at the dealership. Um, I've been buying this typically on eBay, just finding the, the cheapest uh, option on eBay. I think I paid about $12 and some change um, for this, whereas getting it for, directly from my local dealership would have been literally double the price. All right, so we're back inside the vehicle and I'm going to show you how to uh, reset the oil life indicator so you don't get the uh, warning on startup every time. Um, it, this will apply specifically to the 2010 uh, through 2012 models. Uh, the 2013 through 2016 has a different style dash and it'll be a little bit different, uh, but I'll try to get you a link up here in the top right hand corner to a video that shows you that. So we're going to go ahead and start the vehicle. And of course we're still getting the change engine oil soon message here so we can go ahead and hit the clear button to clear away from that and this is the clear button here and um, next you're going to want to hit the menu button which is the one on the side of the stock here and so you can scroll through I'm already on the oil life uh, indicator uh, screen uh, but you can scroll through if you're not. You can see the little red uh, indicators here, the little five different red indicators. So the middle one is the one you want to be on for oil life, uh, but you can use the, uh, the stalk. You can twist it up um, or twist it down like this, and that will get you to here. And then you can see where it says uh, press, set, clear to reset. So that's that button on the end of the stalk. 
So we're going to go ahead and press that and hold it. Or I'm sorry, press it once. And then we'll use the stalk again and turn, uh, turn it up to go to yes. And uh, then we'll go ahead and hit the clear button. And there it is, back at 100%. Alrighty guys, that about does it for this video. I hope it was helpful to somebody. And uh, we've got a lot of other vehicles on this uh, second generation SRX as well as a second generation CTS. Um, so if you'll check out our other videos, they might be handy for you and subscribe for upcoming videos.